Welcome to TED Talks. Our security edition today is focused on risk-based alerting. TED Talks is a series of short webinars focused on features and best practices. We value you, our customer, and want you to continue in your Splunk journey. Our experts help create these tips and tricks, and we want you to leverage them in your daily role. I'm Jairo Camacho, a product marketing specialist for user behavior analytics. I'm excited to share our presentation today on RBA's capabilities and features and introduce my colleague, Jim Apker. I'm Jim Apker, one of Splunk's global security strategists. I've been here for six years involved in all things security and for the past three years have been the creator and chief evangelist for a concept that I call risk-based alerting. Thanks, Jim. Today, we are going to talk about some of the challenges SOC teams are currently facing. We'll also discuss how Splunk RBA can increase SOC effectiveness. And Jim is going to walk us through a great demo of RBA. Afterwards, we will cover additional resources that are currently available to help you take advantage of RBA's capabilities within Splunk Enterprise Security. Our team will be available for Q&A throughout the presentation through the Q&A feature. And if you watch a recorded version of this webinar, please continue the conversation through the Splunk Community website for any follow-up questions. So here are some of the challenges that security operation teams are currently facing. First of all, SOC teams are facing a barrage of alerts every single day. A 2018 survey reported by SC Magazine found that 27% of enterprise security teams experience over 1 million alerts per day. This leads to whitelisting and noise suppression that creates an environment of situational security numbness. Secondly, the SOC, like any part of your business, needs to demonstrate ROI. As of now, most SOCs lack the transparency required to create clear business metrics that demonstrate value. Lastly, the skills shortage in cybersecurity is well documented. By next year, Cybersecurity Ventures estimates the gap of unfilled jobs will grow to an astounding 3.5 million. When analysts churn near all-time highs, why not embrace a change in perspective and realign the SOC to focus not on remediating false positives, but rather on conducting actual security investigations? Let's work together to create some happy analysts. How can RBA improve the SOC team's performance? Our customers have shared with us that it has dramatically reduced alerting by 60 to 70%, significantly increased their true positive rate, made it easier to align and operationalize with MITRE ATT&CK, decoupled the ingest rate and the analytics from the operational spend within their SOC, gained the ability to look across much longer timelines which leverages low and slow to avoid detection. RBA makes the red team's job much harder, making it easier to map against an industry framework opposed to the prevailing general use case-based approach. Now, let's hear from Jim and see that incredible demo. We are at an inflection point in security. The time is now to embrace change and reject the idea that alert fatigue is normal within the SOC. In this demo, I will show you how to reach that change in perspective with your existing Splunk investment without any additional spend. Let's take a look at a demo of enterprise security using the risk-based alerting process. Let's take a look at an instance of enterprise security from Boss of the SOC, which has been configured with risk-based alerting. This can live on-prem, this can live in the cloud. Ultimately, this is just a different way to use enterprise security. So we'll start with the incident review panel. This contains a mixture of traditional notable events uh, that, that were present in Boss of the SOC, as well as this new type of notable events that starts with RBA, 
Before we jump into the RBA specific alerts, let's take note real quick that we have four pages of traditional alerts. And when we zoom into risk-based alerting sourced events, what we'll notice is that very quickly we're down to less than one page. And this is pretty typical for customers that have deployed this risk-based alerting type of configuration. Before we jump into these notable events and explore what the analyst traditionally sees in this type of configuration, let's take a moment just really quick to look at the two types of correlation rules that are ultimately kind of the differentiators with this risk-based alerting approach. We start with rules that, that start with RR. These are our risk rules. These are the rules that are, are responsible for building out that risk index or that risk data model with interesting findings within the environment. So these are traditionally associated with some kind of a risk score. They're traditionally associated with some kind of alignment to a cybersecurity framework, in this case, MITRE ATT&CK. So each one of these, in this case, are aligned to MITRE ATT&CK techniques. They collectively tell an interesting story. There's a mindset change when we look at this type of rule in the sense that they tend to be very noisy by design, right? These are not highly tuned rules. We're not searching for the perfect risk rule. These collectively, again, tell a very you know, interesting story when we align them uh, against this notion of maybe a risk object. Here's the other type of rule. We call these risk incident rules. These are the rules that are responsible for mining that risk index. Um, with the notion of risk object in mind, so we tend to pivot around that. And what we're looking for in this case are risk objects that have high risk scores looking back 24 hours, or even risk objects that exhibit behavior, in this case, looking back seven days, that span three or more MITRE attack tactics. So very interesting rules to start with. Traditionally, too, is going to be what we'll see in most customer environments for the first you know, couple or three months. Back to the incident review panel. Let's take a look at, in this case, we're going to start with the APT scenario, Billy Tun, the first notable event that was sourced from RBA specific to the APT scenario. is very interesting when we first open it up. And what we'll notice is this nice big collection of risk messages. These were, were driven by each individual risk rule. And if we think about that, if we were to use the traditional approach to security and try to drive a notable event for each one of these, we would be right back where we started with all of that alert fatigue, drowning in noise, likely never actually looking at these. But when we use a risk-based alerting approach, what we can do is we can take each one of these, align them in this case to a specific risk object, Billy Tun, and then take a look at an aggregate risk score that exceeds, in this case, a threshold that I set at 100. So a very compelling story gets told just by looking at these risk messages. Let's switch gears though. Let's have the analyst pivot. And let's take a look at all of the risk attributions complements of this user-focused risk attribution panel. And what we're doing is we're taking a look at the entire risk analysis data model, looking at everything specific to Billy Tun, in this case, for all time. And what we'll see are all of the attack technique-related risk rules that trigger, and these smell like user-related techniques. We know about this user from the identity framework. We can look at how these tactics and techniques are triggering over time. I like this panel. This is essentially aggregated counts by risk rule. Behind the scenes, we also have drill downs. So using something like schema accelerated event search, the analyst can pivot out of this panel very quickly into raw events. And again, we're using schema accelerated event search. Most of the investigation will take place within the risk analysis data model over here. But this is interesting, and what I'm doing is I'm aggregating these and then sorting these by time, and this is really interesting from my, uh, uh, let's say, a MITRE attack perspective. If we scroll down a little bit further, this is also very interesting. What I'm doing is I'm scouring the risk analysis data model, and I'm looking for references to Billy Tun, where Billy Tun is not the risk object. And what we end up with are a collection of related objects to Billy Tun. And again, because we're using this risk-based alerting approach, we have connections between risk objects and threat objects, I can do something like this. The analyst can say, well, that's interesting. Let's pivot into Billy Tun's workstation as a related object. I'm going to switch gears into an RBA attribution panel specific to system. And what we'll notice is that we have techniques that are very specific to system related activity. We do happen to know about the system from the asset framework. It is a known device. Another collection of very interesting risk rules aligned to MITRE ATT&CK that are very interesting and again look very specific to system-related activity. 
we do see previous notables for that particular risk object, Billy Dunn's workstation. As an analyst, when I look at related system objects, this might catch my eye, something like a suspicious SSL cert. And we'll notice that in this case, the risk object is an external system. Let's take a look at that. The risk entry there allows us to pivot into the same panel. I'm just populating with that external system. And again, as we scroll down, keeping in mind that we're staying within the confines of the risk analysis data model, it's very quick. What we'll notice is that there are three additional systems involved in this attack scenario, which happen to be the three systems that are involved in lateral movement from boss of the SOC. And then as we scroll down, risk messages associated with this particular object, same thing we could scroll down when it comes to Billy Tun's workstation, very detailed, sorted by time, listing of every single one of these risk messages. It can be paged through to get an exacting understanding of what happened, in this case, specific to Billy Tun's workstation. But I do want to show you one last thing in terms of the investigative process. In addition to finding anomalies and then aligning them to a risk object, whether it's an internal system, external system, a user, maybe a cloud service even, we are also capturing something related to the correlation rule that, that makes it interesting. So when we think about it, every time we write a correlation rule, well, most of the times, um, we're writing it because there's some sort of indicator there that makes it interesting. So it could be an interesting registry entry, it could be a file name, a domain, URL, the actual command that was run that makes it interesting. So now we have this, this concept of risk objects that, that exhibited interesting behavior that are, again, associated with indicators that allow us to do stuff like this. This is relatively new, but it allows us to, let's say, pivot visually. In this case, Billy Tone is our risk object. And I'm looking at essentially all of the indicators that made Billy Tone interesting in aggregate. That begs the question, well, couldn't I also then perhaps use this as a subsearch to go one layer deeper to then say, show me everything related to Billy Tun and these exact indicators? I'll tell you what, let's go two layers deep. And again, this is very interesting because now in yellow, we have a listing of users. In red, we have an a listing of systems that are somehow related to, in this case, Billy Tun. But visually, now we can start to piece together how all of these indicators relate to either Billy Tun's workstation or external objects, perhaps command control, file hashes, and then in this case, all of the other objects that were associated with Billy Tun and that lateral movement. So it's a very cool way of taking these risk objects and linking everything together by grabbing what was originally interesting in each one of these risk rules. So this is quite popular, this is doing well in the field. One more thing to show you, um, that was a quick kind of walkthrough of you know, risk-based alerting from the detection through the investigation. Oftentimes we'll get questions when it comes to tuning. Again, if we wanted to take a look at that risk index to figure out where we are tuning-wise, we do have dashboards within the confines of an app called SARBA that allow us to take a look at the ecosystem as it pertains to maybe, in this case, this risk rule. Makes sense, it's an outlier. It's touching lots of risk objects, but it's not decimating us in terms of risk score or max risk scores. It's also interesting to note from a tuning perspective, here are my two risk incident rules and visually I get a pretty clean picture, nice even distribution in terms of aggregate risk scores and how they're interacting with my risk incident rules. We can do the same thing. What we don't wanna see over here are a collection of risk rules that are really dominant um, associated with maybe three or four objects that are either test or dev or you know scanning machines, something, something that is, is grabbing all of that, that context and unevenly balancing that across the ecosystem. Looking at, at user objects, system objects, threat objects relative to their pre-configured risk scores and system performance. Are these individual risk rules dominating? These aren't running in real time, but are they dominating Performance in terms of long-running searches, how are they being scheduled, what's the total risk, how many hosts are they touching. Lots of interesting things can be gained in terms of long-term tuning by studying that same risk analysis data model. That's it. That's a really quick tour of risk-based alerting. Thanks much for watching. Take care.
We have some great resources available here for you to learn more about risk-based alerting. Check out the documentation in .com sessions. They're filled with great insights. Thank you for your listening, and now let's hand things back over to Hyro. Finally, don't forget that we have an incredible community of Splunk users on our community website, where there is a Q&A section that you can use to learn more about how to operationalize with MITRE ATT&CK. Feel free to participate in the new discussion sections with security TED Talks, as well as Splunk Ideas, where you can submit new product enhancements. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules to join us today. Please tune back in for future TED Talks. We are, we are excited to share this series with you. Thanks again.